Well, John, it's so good to have you on the show, man. I know we've been trying to sync up for a while and you have a lot going on today. So we're going to, we're going to pack it all in in a short amount of time. So I'm grateful for your time, man. Um, and you're very classy to want to still do this interview because I know you've got more and more important things to do. So thank you, man. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I love your heart and, and love who you're serving. And, you know, I didn't get here by myself and I want to make sure I'm helping as many people along the way as possible. Absolutely. Well, that lines up with, with your, your deal, man. You are the author of Giftology. I've loved, I love this book and I think we have probably a bajillion mutual friends and, and your name keeps coming around. And I was like, I know I got to get him on the show. Um, not only because everyone speaks very highly of you and I love your book, the, the art and science of using gifts to cut through the noise, increase referrals and strength and retention. Um, but I love just your heart of, of giving. And that's sort of the, the, the wonderful surprise and delight and give first instead of asking for things first model of, of how you're doing business with your agency. So um, you said something on, on Twitter that I thought was really cool. Maybe you can unpack it. We can start there. Is you said giftology is the gateway to limitless relationships. I love that. Can you unpack that a little bit? And why is giving and gift giving important in cultivating uh, relationships? Yeah, well, I think that, uh, you know, whether you believe in a God or not, it's how we're wired as humans is um, we – uh, we're wired for giving, we're wired for receiving. And I think, what are you doing? I know they'll, they'll come off there. So I got my three-year-old just sit, you know, <clears throat> if you ever peek behind the curtain, wizard of Oz of like, what's really going on? Um, I got four yep. girls, 12, 10, just turned eight today and wow. three and a half. Uh, and the youngest one is the fieriest one. She was on camera. She's got little like blondish red curls and blue eyes, which wow. none of our families have. Um, so no, you have to press the baby. <laughs> She's, we're, and, I, uh, and I've got my daughter with, here. We're rocking with Pe- Peppa Pig here. Oh, there you <clears> go. So, so the, the, the way God's wired us is to, is to connect to other humans. We're not made mm. to do life alone. Yeah. And I think that even if you don't believe in a, a, a God, you understand that we're tribal, right? We're, we're in community. And I think that when you, when somebody says something like our words have power, but when somebody mm-hmm. takes action and does something, it shows that their words and are congruent and alignment. So there's a lot of talkers about like, you know, Adam Grant's book made it really popular to talk about giving and taking and matching. And everybody wants to say they're a giver, but I think in general, most people are matchers. But mm-hmm. even a matcher, like you get to understand who somebody is by like showing up and doing something like gratitude yeah. isn't just a feeling, it's a doing. And so I think that when you can start showing up powerfully, with generosity and the generosity doesn't have to be like the crazy Brooks brothers, $10,000 clothing experience that we talk about. Like it can be like a referral. It can be your time. It can be words of affirmation. It can be a video. It could be some encouragement. Like there's, you know, Gary Chapman, five love languages, a mentor of mine. And like, there's five ways, right. That we can in marriage, but really all humans yeah. love to be loved on in those five ways. And so to me, the gateway of like relationships, which is really, nobody cares about gifts, by the way, it's not even my love language. But we all want things to happen, outcomes to happen in our relationships. Mm. We want more referrals. We want more retention, more results, more revenue, more loyalty. Like the the gift is a way to show somebody that you're for real. Mm. And when you do it once, cool. But if you do it like five times, that's why people are like, well, John, I did a gift and it didn't work. I'm like, no, you give to get. That's a transactional gift. Mm. But when you, there's a compound effect. There's a law of the harvest effect when you show up repetitively and show that that's who you are, it wasn't tactical. And I think my original mentor, Paul, who was a rainmaker, it just, he didn't have a relationship plan. He just lived it. Mm. And so I think when we talk about like the lever points and the gateways and like, Hey, where do I start? Like, I don't care if you're a solopreneur. I don't care if you're an author. I don't care if you sell insurance. I don't care if you're a $20 billion company. It comes down to relationships. It comes down to relationships and people and humans. Yeah. Whether you got 20 million people, 20,000 people or five clients that really matter, it's the human to human connection. And people do a lot of good job talking about it, but they don't mm. do a lot of good job of following through because they're scared. They're afraid to look silly or weird or uncomfortable. Or what if it doesn't work? And so when I talk about the gateway, I really do mean like it is like the entry point to me is showing up generously, even when nothing comes back. Mm. Yeah. Even and because. Because that, to your point, it's like a lifestyle. It's like a, it's who you are. It's not the a thing you've done in the past or you do every once in a while. You just if you become a generous person, you, you're going to reap the reward over time of all of those deposits, right? In so many different ways. 
Yeah, but I mean, DR Horton, the largest home builder in the country, became a client after seven years. The Chicago Cubs became a client after seven years. Most people's long game is seven days. I did it for seven days, John, it didn't work. I gave this gift one time, John, it didn't work. I did this one thing, I'm like, no. Like if you look at Vaynerchuk and the guys, you know, and he's not a believer, he's not a Christian, but he lives Christian biblical principles in certain areas of his life. And oh, by the way, like whether you're Christian or not, like it works, like they're universal principles, like a man will reap what he sows. And so like, he loves the gamesmanship. That's why he loves like the Taylor Swift where she like, does things that are unscalable. She shows up at a wedding. She can't show up at everybody's wedding, but she does it like over the top. And, and there's a ripple effect to that. He like, I think sent a Jersey to somebody that ordered like one bottle of wine, found out he was a Jets fan or a Buffalo Sabres fan, send it. It didn't make sense to or for somebody that ordered a $250 bottle of wine to send him a hundred dollar Jersey. Yeah. But what did he do? He poured into that relationship and it, it, it creates ripples. Mm. And so I think that's where people are like, they're so short sighted, like, John, I did this or I budgeted this much. And they don't understand that they're not playing the long game. Yes. You don't want their granola? Why not manage, you know, Bro. why not go all in and manage the, uh, you know, see what life's really like on the, uh, you know, the entrepreneur. Not this is hard, this is the, the most re- yeah this is the most real podcast experience I love it so much. So I, did, can- I, I mean, I, I frankly, one of I spoke for an EO chapter, big group of CEOs in Buffalo. Took my I take all my girls on one on one trips once yeah. a year when they turn five um, or six at, that in that range. And uh, as I speak, it's this group. It's at like a distillery. My daughter, who's just turned six, is like sitting front row. And uh, twice during my keynote, you know, they're paying me a lot of money to speak at this event. Twice during the keynote, she asked, she had to go potty. (laughs) My rating, now it's hard to get a nine rating for EO. I get a 9.9 rating at that event. I think part of it was the, and people are like, are you embarrassed? I'm like, no, like somebody's wife took her to the restroom. I'm like, to me, like being able to see the warts and the realness of things, Mm -hmm. like we all have them. Um, we all like, nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. Nobody has everything all together all the time. And, but I think being able to handle that with class and, and, yeah. uh, so anyway, I, I don't know if I always do it that well, but I just, it was a good reminder when I got my sheets back, I was like, wow, wow. I wonder if they're going to dock me for that. And I think if anything, it probably bumped me up a half a point. Oh, I bet. So I bet. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, dude, like give people an example real quick. Like let's say, Cause I love, I love your model and I love what you do. Um, if let's say I'm a digital entrepreneur, I sell courses, I have a YouTube channel, I have a podcast. My clients are, they're doing this kind of stuff. What's an example of what you would say we could do to like do for one, what we would want to do for many that we can't, what's an unscalable thing we could do to just hook somebody up in your mind that to apply the giftology yeah. like, mindset to that kind of world. I mean, I think you, there are some things you could do at scale, which might be, taking 10 or 20 of them a month and handwriting a note, doing something in the physical mm-hmm. realm to make the, cause there's so much digital, right? Yeah. That like when you can make things physical, I think it, it's really powerful. I think there are times where you could pick one person a month and do something that does not make any, like the Vaynerchuk example. But I, I think that sometimes people will make the excuse because they're a solopreneur or digital that they can't do things physically or it doesn't mm-hmm. scale or doesn't make sense. And so I think figuring out what percentage of profit you want to reinvest back into the relationships to figure out, is, is it going to be one big thing? Is it going to be one physical thing that you do for everybody? You know, what are those kind of things? So, so I would say, even if you're running, let's say a quarter million dollar business, 250 grand a year, mm-hmm. you know, are you going to reverse tie and do 10% back, back into the relationships? Like that means technically you could do 25 grand. Mm. Like we've had people that are college students that apply this to their, how they treat their professors and their advisors or their mentors. You know, the handwritten note to me is one of the most powerful things on the planet. And when you can do that, not just outsource to like yeah. some robot, but you could take and write five really thoughtful handwritten notes every single week. Um, yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. Like what's that cost you? It costs your time. Yeah. But other than that, like, and I think that um, I won't let people send whether it's a Rolex or whether it's knives, like a lot of the core things that we do a lot of, the note carries just as much weight as the artifact or the gift yeah. because it provides the context, the meaning, the story. And so I think that, you know, I'm the gift guy, right? I'm the one who's doing crazy heart bombs and art pieces for Vaynerchuk and Patrick, Bet David. People expect physical crazy things from me and it still works for me. Like my budget this year went from when I was in college at $500 a month was what I invested 
So six grand a year to now 23 years later, this year it'll be about three quarters of a million dollars invested back into relationships for gifts. That's cool. So anybody can do it, but you have to start setting aside that money. Yeah. When you can do that, then you can start to say like, am I going to do all in on one thing? Like we have these things called artifact mugs that are crazy. They're like two grand. And, um, the, um, people think two grand for a mugs nuts, but if you can make a dude like Ed Milet cry, like yes. what's that worth to you? Like yeah. you're a creator. You want a great, you want great people. If you can make Ed Milet cry, was if you could be in deep relationship with yeah. Ed Milet or a Tim Tebow, like we all want those influencers or mentors or people we respect from afar to be in our corner. But a lot of times we're not putting in the energy and effort mm. into having that relationship plan, following through on it, you know, like get him or I sent him 18 gifts over 18 months. I beat him wow. up. I built him a $5,000 knife set. People, most people give up after one or two. And to this day, like he texted me a picture of his great granddaughter the other day. Like we became friends. Wow. And that's what we all want. Like, like at, at a deep level, whether you're John Maxwell, whether you're the Koch brothers, whether you're Gary Vaynerchuk, we all want real relationship with people. And I think that sometimes people stop. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like courting your wife and then yeah. like not doing anything once you're married and which we've all been probably guilty of at least a little bit. Like we take somebody for granted. And so I think that even on the digital creator side, we're like, we already have that person. Why would we do something for that SaaS person or that subscriber yeah. or that person in the membership? And what I think is so dumb is like, it's so hard to get somebody in. And if we just started to show up for those relationships and, and said like, What's it cost to get that person or what's the lifetime value of that relationship or what could it be? What if every one of our subscribers or every one of our membership members um, every year brought in one person? It became a sales rep for the brand. Not a, like people think they have loyalty when they when somebody stays a client or as a subscriber or a member. That's not loyalty. Like loyalty is where you actually go recruit your family and friends, or your clients to come on board. Like you mm. sell for that relationship. Yeah, that's that's loyalty. That's next level, yeah. And, and and we most people financial advisors like, oh, I have loyal clients. I'm like, no, you don't. Are they recruiting their family and friends to become clients? No, then you have passively loyal relationships. Mm. And so I think when people start to understand, even as a digital creator, there's so much they could do. And the bar for the, those people, because it's so digital, because it's so unusual, they could like, like most people are not even a one out of ten. Yeah. You don't have to get to my level or your level. They just have to get to maybe five out of 10 and you'll be like, so like out of the box world class because the bar is so low in the physical artifact realm uh, versus like laser light show, like all the investment in technology or cool cameras and video and all these other yeah. things. Though that's, there's a pissing match going on there where it's like, I'm 1% better than you. Nobody cares. Yeah. So I don't know if any of this is resonating, but if I was a, if I was going all in on digital creation or, you know, when I was a solopreneur, like I'm looking for things where everybody sucks at it or thinks it doesn't matter. And I go all in on those things. Hey friend, we'll get back to the episode in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a gift for hanging out with me today. I want to give you my 30 day online income jumpstart guide. This is a four week checklist bullet points to go from zero audience, zero customers, maybe even zero idea of what your business should be to putting money in your pocket 30 days from now. It won't be a million dollars in 30 days, but it will be money in your pocket. You will have figured out your idea. You will have tested your idea. You will have launched your idea and taken massive action towards building a business and a life that you love. If you already know your business idea, but you've been sitting around and you haven't taken action on it, then you need this guy because it'll walk you through a four-week plan to go from where you are to putting money in your pocket in 30 days. And if you've never figured out what your business idea is and you have no followers online and no audience, it's okay. This will help you start at zero. I promise you. It's a PDF. It's fast. It's easy to read. It's not an ebook. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. It's more about taking action and doing the right things in the right order. And it's free as my gift to you. So just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart to get your 30-day online income jumpstart guide. It's grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Now back to the episode. I, I know I love it so much. I mean, I think in our space, in the digital space, to your point, it's probably way easier to blow somebody's mind because they are not expecting a course creator or a membership site owner to send you a physical gift in the mail for being a customer. Uh, most people don't even over deliver digitally, which is the easiest way to do it. Like I'll, I'll, people will buy a course of mine and when they join the course inside the course, I'll have a whole bonus series or video that I didn't even promise 
on the sales page of like, hey, it's a little surprise and delight like once you got inside. But even that, that's easy because it's just another video. It doesn't take me mailing something or a handwritten note. So even, your whole point is that like it's, we, my, my business model is give, give, give on the front end. 95% of the content I make, I mean, I've been on YouTube for 14 years. It's like in two brands, it's all just free and, it, and it's all the stuff. You could never buy a thing and you could go change your life with the content that because you that's what gets people to buy in like, wow, he's legit. But it's so easy for even a guy like me to miss once the transactions happened, keep giving on the back end or over deliver or a surprise and delight on the back end once they've already purchased, which I think is a, a huge opportunity for us digital entrepreneurs. It's huge. Because it's not the one person, it's the one per it's the effect that that one person could have. It's like when you, when you get like a, like one, you know, Tim Ferriss calls it, you know, raving fan or um, true fans, mm -hmm. raving fans, Ken Blanchard, like there's a bunch of names for it. But the reality is if you get somebody who loves and wants to see you win, I mean, I have some relationships that are probably like a Joey Coleman, who's probably opened up you know, 20 stages for me. Like I've never booked with a bureau. We're booking at call it 50 grand speaking gigs. And I have no official speaking training, by the way, outside of like working with Pete Vargas. The reason I land my speaking gigs is not because of Facebook ads. We've never ran an ad. It's not because of bureaus. It's because I have clients and relationships that are like a unpaid sales rep. Yeah. What's that worth? What's it worth to have a Joey Coleman or a Steve Weatherford or a name the person? Yeah that yeah. doesn't just like you like well, there's a lot of likable people in the world sure right you can't you be kind you know joel marion like great sympathy kindness that'll take you really far but when you can get somebody to love you and want to see you win i mean dude you like that one person can outdo a, a sales rep that's paid 150 grand or 200 grand yeah oh yeah Right. I mean, I love because that. their five words matter because they're saying it because they wanted to, not because they're getting a commission. Yeah. That's but if you're huge. smart, you are sending them cash or sending them love bombs, not transactionally, just like that's what that, that's the cool thing is you find those people or you inspire those people. That's the, the thing is, I think most people wait for the referrals to happen. And I think our model, I try to find the people I think that could be that based upon who they are. Mm. And I don't wait for them to refer. I love on them first. Yes. And That's inspire beautiful. them to become that raving fan. Most people oh, reward the raving fan. Yeah. That's yeah, transactional. This is preemptive. Yeah. You're doing it first. Mm -hmm. When you're proactive, you're in a, you're in control. B it's way yeah. more valuable and more meaningful because you're doing it because you wanted to, not because like most people are like, I want to do a referral program. I'm like, that's dumb. That's do you, do you want, you know, like you think you're being generous, but really all you're doing is rewarding. They're basically buying their own gift. Yeah. So even if you spend a five thousand dollar watch, but if somebody gave you a hundred thousand dollar speaking deal or YouTube, you know, yeah. partnership or whatever it is, so you paid for that yourself as the yeah. I mean, in their head, they're probably thinking, "Dude made a hundred grand and he just gave me five percent." Yeah. Whereas if you did the five, even if you, you did a two thousand dollar thing for the relationship, no, 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 no strings attached. By the way, that's the you know that's where Gary and I like really are in alignment. Like people, you know. You know that it was a real gift when you don't expect something uh, yeah. to, to come. If you expect something, it wasn't a gift. It, you, it's like you give your wife something and expect something that night. Guess what? It wasn't a gift. It was a manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do that for a relationship and business, the same thing. So you can't keep score. Yeah. Now, I don't continue to give to takers. So Adam Grant's sure. filter of like, go give to other give. Try to outgive. Build a relationship. Like we have a group of guys like a John Hall, John Rampton. Uh, um, Bobby Glazer, there's like a group of guys, Shep Hyken, all these guys, and we try to outgive each other. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Um, but most of the time, like waiting for somebody to do something and then giving them something completely ruins what we're talking about, which is like truly mm -hmm. showing up generously and inspiring people to want to be in your corner. I love that. I love that. I love how like um, you know, in the Bible, you get Second Corinthians eight and nine when Paul's going to go on, going off on, on financial giving, but he says, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. And the Greek word there for cheerful is where we get the word hilarious from. And it's just like, I just picture that picture of you just having, so you're laughing because you're having so much fun because you're just doing this crazy thing where you're giving and the act of giving itself is the fun. Um, as opposed to like, you're saying, asking for something in return. And 
there's so much research on this. I did, I did a whole TED talk on why givers are happier and have less money stress, but even just the physiological response of, of giving five bucks away as opposed to spending it on yourself, you, you rate happier. And it's like, man, it's not even, to your point, a strategy to get something, even if you know you're not trying to get something. It, you will benefit from moment one by just giving freely and being that kind of person. It's a blast. Yeah. I mean, the response, the response of like their family, like there is, but it should be fun. Like I remind people, like people are like, what if I give the wrong gift? Or like nobody went to prison, nobody died. Like, yeah, you it's know, okay. Like, you can't embarrass yourself. There's like, there is risk involved in giving over the top and generously. So I do think that, you know, like sometimes, you know, we've done things and it didn't work. It did like the, the client wanted to appreciate somebody and it blew up in our face. Wow. Yeah. Like, and, and one in particular, it's like a forty thousand dollar gift with, um, with one of the most I can't say the name because it's sure. it's confidential, but as to say, it's one of the most recognizable names in media in the world. And this person had a real relationship. It wasn't they were trying to do something, but it was it was a forty thousand dollar gift of appreciation. Wow. But the way that it got received in translation somehow blew up, and it like they had already engaged, like they knew each other for years, wow. and they. They, they responded really well. And then they went dark for like the last four years. Wow. I still don't to this day know why, um, thought we executed it to like an over the top crazy level, but there is risk involved. Like when you're doing this, like it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be impactful. Like think about any part of your business. Like if there's no risk involved of like it backfiring, not working, then it's not really like edgy. It's not really pushing the envelope. It's not really wow. Yeah. And so like, you know, the Brooks brothers experience when I did that for Cameron Harold, he could have thought I was a stalker. He could have like never met with me again. Like instead it turned into like one of the most powerful referral mentorship relationships on the planet that I couldn't have bought. You know, people are like, why do you spend seven grand or 25 grand on one relationship? I'm like, I, ca I can't even get a good assistant for half of a year for that amount. Like the people are like, man, that's a lot of money. I'm like, compared to what? You'll drop mm. 25 grand a month on Facebook. Mm. You'll drop 25 grand on a mastermind. You'll drop a hundred thousand dollars, you know, on one employee that may or may not work out. Like, mm -hmm. like 20 grand or five grand on one relationship that could shift your business for forever. That could be in your corner and send you deal after deal, referral after referral, mm. mentorship idea after mentor. Like think about what it costs to get coached by. I have a buddy that pays 200 grand a year at the beginning of every year to get coached by Steve Hardison, 200 grand. Yeah. For one, one, like one coaching relationship. And so when people are like, dude, five grand, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. I'm like, it, it only feels that way because you've never done it before and it's not right. the norm to do it. And yes. so that's where I challenge people, but like, shift your framework and your paradigm and understand like, this is not a, a really that radical of a concept being generous with your relationships <laughs> and going all in on them and investing in people like they matter, like. It's just unusual in 2023 to do it. And so anyway, yeah. that's, that's, you know, some of the framework that I, I try to think about. It's so powerful. Yeah, man. Oh, I love it. I mean, the last thought here is just that it, I know it's not meant to get something, but it, it's like a better use of investment funds for like a marketing channel. Like if you're looking at everything as a marketing channel, that's, this is a powerful, but unique marketing channel. We're just, we're primed for certain types of, uh, that makes sense. Facebook ads makes sense. You know, this makes sense. You know, connecting with these people makes sense. Going to masterminds, it makes sense. We have some lanes we're used to, to your point, but I just see this as another investment in, in the business. And it's just, but it's actually more, more fun. All the other ones outside of a good mastermind, all the other ones aren't nearly as fun. Well, and show me like, other than through people, like Facebook ads, you're like happy if you put a dollar in and get like $3 back out, right? Sure. Like we have people, clients on the agency side or that are doing giftology on their own, or, you know, we have a membership group now called Rich Relationships where we have some of the members in that, that'll put a dollar in and get a thousand dollars back out. Wow. Like it's a thousand X. That wow. only happens for humans. Yeah. There's no like typical marketing channel where you put a dollar in and get a thousand back out. You, otherwise you do that. Like you, it's like, the, you'd be like an ATM or a jackpot, like a, oh, you yeah. know, a, um, you know, in the casinos, like it's just, there, but the right relationship could produce six or seven figures a year for you. Wow. And, and, and that, that goes for a lot of businesses or plumbing. Like you think about it. So to me, like, yeah, it's a reshifting, it's a marketing, and, but you're planting a, a seed 
you know, or an acorn that could turn into an oak tree. But yeah. that doesn't typically happen. Sometimes it happens in three months, you get lucky, but it might take three years, it might take five years. I had a yeah. relationship that just paid off after building a relationship for 17. They, they got a new position at a Fortune 50 company. It's a $22 billion company, and they're bringing us in, wanting us to work with the entire company. 17 years of building the relationship. So, wow. um, you know, if, the, if these things are interesting to your tribe or your audience, like, I mean, a place, one place to start is avoid the trinkets and trash and stupid things like the 10 worst things to give. Cause that's where like, people are like, I want to give wine. I want to give food. I want to give gift cards. And like, we have the 10 worst gifts to avoid giving and your audience can go download it. The giver's edge with an S the giver's edge.com. We'll also send some of our best articles and strategies. None of this costs anything. You don't have to go buy the book, but that's to me, like before you buy the book, go like get our free stuff. Yeah. And it's, I have a number of clients that are like, you know, we put twice a week out our best ideas around this because I can't work I with that. most companies. I, I have to go equip, like the goal is to get a million leaders to be radically generous with their employees, their clients, their suppliers. You know, we can only handle a few hundred clients um, yeah. the way that we're built, but I want leaders out there being more thoughtful with their marriages, being more thoughtful with their three employees, being more thoughtful. Because if that happens, like if we affect leaders, like those million leaders could impact, you know, oh, yeah. a half a billion people, um, which That's to me amazing. gets really, really exciting. I love your heart, man. Let, I have one final question that we end every show with. We'll just do this and we'll get you on with your day, brother. But I called it the golden rule segment. It's we can go anywhere you want this to go. You've got four beautiful daughters. I have two girls. So I'm a girl dad too. I love it. And I know you and your wife are teaching them so much. You're raising them right. You're pouring wisdom into them. But imagine they forget everything that you've taught them except for one piece of advice that actually sticks with them for the rest of their life, like a golden rule. What would you want that to be for them? I think um, if they understand the power of giving more than is reasonable, my original mentor, Paul, who really like launched the giftology movement and ritually, all the things that we teach and do. I mean, I think that... Um, when you show up powerfully in all areas of your life and you don't hold back five or 10%, you give beyond that, um, in your marriage in your, you know, your, your, your health, your, you know, all of those things, like unreasonable things happen. And that's what mm -hmm. we want. We want, you know, call them miracles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God can move and do crazy things that outside the, the physical realm, but a lot of things are possible that seem impossible if you show up consistently and give more than is reasonable. And so I, that would be, that would be the thing if I was putting something on my tombstone. That was, that's one of the things I'd want to uh, to be there for my girls to carry on. I love it. John, thank you so much, man. The book is Giftology, the art and science of using gifts to cut through the noise, increase referrals and strength and retention. Check out thegiversedge.com. We'll put all of this in the show notes below and check out the Rich Relationship Society as well. Uh, John, have an amazing day, brother. Thanks for your time. I know this was a difficult day. And we, uh, we got you on the schedule and made it happen, but I appreciate you. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, brother. I hope you enjoyed that episode with John. I know I did. I, I really enjoyed my time with him. He's a great guy. He's one of the dudes that's just a real deal, and I want to get more time with him. Don't forget to pick up his book, Giftology, and also he has a gift, 10 Gifts to Avoid Giving Key Clients so you can start gifting correctly. It's a free resource. Go to thegiversedge.com, grab that resource, and just support the book. And hey, if you do nothing else, Take one principle away from our conversation or his book and give one gift to somebody. I know it's Christmas right now when this episode's dropping, so it's probably not the best time to give because everyone's expecting a gift. But when you give a random gift to somebody in a random time of year, it leaves an impression that might unlock doors that would be previously locked for you. So that's my challenge for you. And I hope you're having an incredible week. Have a Merry Christmas. I have one more episode for you in this calendar year. You don't want to miss it next week. Uh, and then a lot of new stuff coming in 2024 that I cannot wait to share with you. So please stay tuned, subscribe to the podcast. If you're an Apple podcast or Spotify, or if you're here on YouTube watching this, please subscribe to the channel and like the videos so you'll get all of them. We got a lot of good stuff coming in 2024. Some big, uh, some big things I can't wait to share with you. So have an incredible Christmas. I'll see you next week in a new episode.